majestic shade of Louis XI can be sensed behind the flamboyant front of Notre Dame de Claret. It is often said that although he was a great benefactor of many cathedrals and churches, dedicated Oh, excuse me. J'ai perdu la ligne. Speak English. Don't daydream. You must become educated, even if you are bored reading to an old woman. Oh, please. I love reading to you. Well, get on with it, then. It is often said that although he was a great benefactor of many cathedrals and churches dedicated to the saints, this was only in regions which held... <laughs> What is it now? I thought I heard someone. Oh, nonsense. But, Mamma, I'm sure I heard. I doubt if Mademoiselle is still interested. Well, there's the ad. Please be good enough to wait here a moment, Monsieur. Entrez. Il s'appelle McGill, mademoiselle. Vous pensez qu'il a des nouvelles, Stéphane? Je ne sais pas, mais ce n'est pas une bonne idée. Faites-le monter, s'il vous plaît. Certainement, comme vous voulez. There is something I should explain. Oui. Mademoiselle Marcel is practically blind. She has led a sheltered, contemplative life. The tragedy was a terrible shock to her. Well, there would have been anyone. To me, Mademoiselle Marcel is not just anyone. Monsieur McGill. Thank you, Stefan. I didn't realize you spoke such good English. But if I want to hire somebody, why should it be you? Well, I'm pretty good at this sort of thing. You are very blunt, monsieur. Can you do better than the police? Probably. Anyway, if you were satisfied with the police, you wouldn't be advertising rewards, would you? 
You are right. They won't tell me anything. How long have you been blind? Since birth. But I'm not totally blind. I can see some light, some dark. Yeah, we all do that. Thank you. Thank me for what? For not ignoring what is most obvious about me. Are all Americans like you? I hope not. Well, they're all shapes and sizes, just like the French. Then what is most obvious about you? I guess my gray hair. But you're young. How do you know? Mama always said I was very intuitive. Mama, is that your mother? Madame Robard adopted me from an orphanage because she was blind and I am the way I am. She made me her daughter. The jewels were her proudest possessions. They had been in the family for years. Her robber wore them at the court of Napoleon. You see, money means little to me, but I would like to have them back because she loved them. Well, I could give you the names of some rather prominent people I've worked for. I guess you could ask them about me, confidentially. And what would they say? That you can trust me. And how much would this trust cost? $350 a week, plus expenses, plus a pretty good bonus for anything I recover. They show the brooch and the tiara, and Mama wearing them. Is the insurance form there? Yes. And according to it, the brooch was insured, but not the tiara. Mama always said it was priceless. Well, yeah, she should have paid the premium. Now, you have no idea who stole these. No. We, oui. il s'appelle McGill. J'en ai pas pu l'empêcher. Seulement McGill. Je dois m'en aller. What if somebody else answers the address now? Well, let me know. Will I hear from you? Sure. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye, Mr. McGill. Everything satisfactory, monsieur? Yeah, it was okay. How was your telephone call? Personal. Mademoiselle Robot told me you were knocked unconscious that night. You recovered yet? Completely, thank you. Well, maybe you were sitting remember something else now. He wore a stocking mask. I saw him only for an instant in the darkness. It's too bad. Indeed. And will I be seeing you again? Yep. According to the insurance records, you made a valuation of that about ten years ago. That's not quite correct, monsieur. It was a revaluation, and only of the brooch. Not of this? The diamond tiara? No, monsieur. My men. We make this completely official. Inspector Banner, Surete General. Well, he's working a long shift. As always, we are short staffed. You intend to work for a while in Paris? Well, no working, no eating. And I love Paris. Any objections to that? In principle, I could not care less. But in particular, do not work for Mademoiselle Marcel Robard. Why not? Her stepmother was murdered only three weeks ago. 
We are still actively pursuing the matter. Look, I'm only interested in the jewels. You are experienced. You know they must be broken up by now. I don't know. They're heirlooms. They have historic value. There's a good chance that they're still in one piece. The field is too big for you, monsieur. You have no chance. What are you worried about? You will get in my way. Well, I'll tiptoe. Find some other work. Maurice will continue to follow you. Well, you better tell him to tiptoe too, then. He will not interfere with you, monsieur, no matter how loudly you may shout. Be wise. Forget about the Hobart Jews. Suddenly the hotel is full of guests. Leon, come here, Leon, to this, Leon, to that. I couldn't get away. Well, that'll teach you to go straight, Leon. Listen, I'd like you to do me a favor. Yeah? Just walk down to the end of the hall and walk back. Eh? Hey? Come on, you heard me. I did a doctor for you. Just walk down there and come back. Crazy? Monsieur McGill. Who the devil are you? I am Henri Thibault. Bully for you. I gave your friend a few francs and told him to wait downstairs. That's where you're going to be in. Oh, just a moment. First, we have a little talk. <laughs> you do talk, Monsieur McGill, don't you? Oh. <clears throat> when Madame Robert was killed, she was truly mourned by two people. I was one of them. I was her closest friend. I'm also the nearest thing to a relative, guardian of uh, Marcel Robert. So, you're here to protect her interests? No, no. I have come to see you. <sighs> what do you see? A cognac. A vous permettez? There's a glass. Merci. No, no, I see a man who has uh, taken a job from a blind girl. A girl without uh, any experience, without any... Listen, I just answered an ad. It was placed without my knowledge. Well, that reward was announced in every newspaper in Paris. A reward for information. Uh, have you any? No. Then there is nothing to say. Right. Look. Don't worry about it. I'll earn my money. Oh, you admit that what you want from Marcel is money. Yeah, and all she wants from me are those <laughs> heirlooms. Unfortunately, she's unable to pay you. Uh, my signature is required on all her checks. Well, you have to take that up with her. You will look very foolish when you're unable to collect your fee. Well, I'll collect it. I assure you of that. Three weeks ago, I was at a conference at the American Embassy, and I had a call from Banar. You know Bernard? I met him. I rushed to the Villa Robard. My old friend was dead. Police, everywhere. Marcel. Quiet, silent as stone. For a moment, I thought that she had lost her mind. I went to her. I whispered to her. Then she called me. Oncle Henry. Uncle Henry. Marcel has been brought up in that awful house, alone, with an invalid. The first nine years of her life in an orphanage were hell, and the rest was uh, limbo. 
She's at the same time the most innocent and the most uh, experienced creature alive. Monsieur McGill, I do not know what your life has been. I shall find out, of course. But whatever you are, whatever you may have done, if you have any humanity in you, you will not harm that girl. I don't intend to hurt her. Very well. Then, uh, shall we say, I give you 500 American dollars if you leave Paris now. One thousand dollars. You are asking me to leave because you are angry or because I am getting dangerously near your price? My price is $350 a week plus expenses, and I'm working this week. C'est dommage. Now you understand what I want? It will be expensive? No, it won't, Leon. It's just a little information. I'll do my best. I'm sure you will. By the way, your friend is still outside. He's very patient. His name's Maurice, works in the narcotics squad. You're not involved with drugs, are you? Oh, not that I know of. Room 27 at the back. It's empty. You could step out of the window, down the fire escape, and away. Well, I may take you up on that later. <laughs> Morning, friend. Hello? Qui est à l'appareil? McGill, Miss Robar? Yes, yes, this is Mademoiselle Marcel. Would you meet me at the Tuileries Gardens today? Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. I never go out by myself except... Well, it's a beautiful day. Wouldn't you like to get out? Why, why yes, I'd like to, of course, but I... If you say so. No, merci. Hello. You look great. So do you. <laughs> Wish I could order a warmer day. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah. Oh. I hear children playing ball. Yeah. My mom didn't like me to go out. Around the garden at home, yes. But in the city, never. Why not? I am as I am. She couldn't go out, so I stayed with her. Do you want to do that? I had my lessons. French, English. I had to learn Braille. I read to her. She always said we didn't need the outside. <laughs> and then, once a month, Etienne would drive me to a concert. That was exciting. Something to look forward to. Why did you ask me to come here today? Because I'd like to talk to you alone. I'd like to ask you a few questions. There's a bench about two steps back. Do you know a man named Bannard? He is a policeman. He talked to me that night. How about Henri Thibault? Maman's dearest friend and mine. Well, you know, he wants me to stay away from you. He's probably afraid you will take advantage of me in some way. Are you afraid of that? I'm not experienced in the world. 
Well, you're doing pretty well. When Mama took me in, I had never had a friend. I could hardly speak. I could not ever remember being hugged into arms. Even when she punished me for being stupid or slow-witted or disobedient. Even then, it was heaven. And you were reading to her that night? Yes. And then I heard the footsteps. I told you. But you didn't recognize them. You think because I am blind, I can remember footsteps like you remember faces? You might. Do you think you'd recognize them if you heard them again? Oh, I don't know. I get frightened whenever anybody comes up those stairs now. Whether I could remember, I don't know. Stefan was unconscious. The maid was out, or let. It was her day off. Yeah. Did your stepmother wear that brooch and tiara often? Oh, yes. Every evening when she dressed for dinner. Did she entertain much? No. Except for Uncle Henri. Uncle Henri. Old Uncle Henry. Well, here comes Stefan. I guess he's coming back for you. What is it called? What do you mean? The, the aftershave lotion you use. Hey, you got a good nose. <laughs> yes. Never seen it. Listen, would you care to go to a concert with me one evening? Concert? Oh, no, no. You, you misunderstood. Now, the concerts are really more like parties for blind people with chamber music and gifts for everybody. Mama financed it all, even though she could not go herself. Mademoiselle, it's very late. Just a moment, Stefan. I am continuing with the concerts. Mama would have wished. The first since she died will be next Thursday night. Would you like to come? You forget, mademoiselle, that the concerts are only for the blind. I am the hostess, Stefan. I can make an exception for Monsieur McGill. An exception. I'd love to. Well, I'll see you then. Au revoir. I can tell you nothing about the brooch. Well, sometimes no news is good news. What about the tiara? It's rumored that a tiara of that design was broken up, sold to an acquaintance of a friend of mine years ago. How many years ago? Where? 1956, in Paris. 56? Hmm. Paris. Yes, that's the lady. Mother Francesca Mandry of Paris. Father Emile Robard of Toulon. Maternal grandmother Eugenie Grana. Maternal grandfather... Wait a second, wait a second. Does she have an ancestor in the court of Napoleon I? I ask myself again, how can I be certain that the police wish me to reveal to you information that I supplied to them? Well, how else would I have found you? Well, perhaps you awakened every expert in Paris before coming here to make me sleepless. I wouldn't have taken very long. <laughs> Why not wait until morning when I can telephone Inspector Banner? Monsieur, you have my check. A robber who wore a certain brooch and a certain tiara that, let us say, the Napoleon's coronation? That's right. Yes or no? My name is Delacroix, but I'm not related to the great painter. The name of Waba has even less claim to fame. There was no Waba of any consequence to the court of Napoleon. Then there were no robot heirlooms. No. Jewels, perhaps, but heirlooms, no. Mm. Well, I'm indebted to you. Not if the bank honors your check, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Let's see it. Thanks a lot, Maurice. You have a good memory for names. Well, I'll never forget yours. You're under arrest, Monsieur McGill. What do you mean, I'm under arrest? It took a friend of mine about 12 hours to find out that that tiara was broken up years ago. It took me 12 minutes. Uh, it's going to take me a lot longer than that to believe that that old lady was killed for a paste copy of a tiara and an heirloom that's no heirloom. That is not your problem. Why haven't you told Marcel what you found out? Why haven't you? I will, as soon as I get out of here. And spoil her illusions about her stepmother? Uh, maybe that's what she needs, a little truth. Truth? You know what I have in here? Your lunch? A confidential report concerning you. Confidentially, I don't care. But Marcia Robard will. Maybe so. I'm going to tell her who you are and what you are. Good for you. McGill, I want you out of this case and out of my sight. Permanently. That is official. Do you hear me? I hear you. Then get out. Bless you. my footsteps. Yes, but I was expecting you. Maman tried to teach me about people and about business. I should have listened to her more carefully. Inspector Bernard has just phoned Bernard. Me. Bernard's a liar. Thank you. What are you? What do you think? Bernard told me what you are. An American official who betrayed his country. A traitor and now a, a bounty hunter. A man who lives by violence will do anything for money. No, I won't do anything for money. Oh, why won't you admit it? I work for money, yes, everybody does. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm no traitor. Oh, you'll get your money. Listen, I can still help you. Not another sou. Now, what are you so angry for? You convinced me to hire you to find the heirlooms, but you knew there were no heirlooms. But I just found that out. Oh, and, and did you come straight to me and tell me that you could not earn your salary because you could not find that which did not exist? No, because Bernard kept me. Oh, of course, Bernard. He stopped you. He stopped you. Bernard stopped you from telling me the truth. Bernard stopped you. And my mother lied. No precious heirlooms. But she wore them every night. They weren't what she said they were. She told you some romantic story about Napoleon. She told me more. The world, she said, is a darker place than you could ever see. Black with, with betrayal and lies and deceit. Stay here, she said, in this quiet room, in this warm place, and read to me and to yourself and be content. And you will have all the good the world has to give. I haven't betrayed you. You are going to prove that the world isn't what Maman said. Not all hate and deceit. Not a reward if you're good and a beating if you're bad. Not, not a hand which, which leads you in the dark and then lets you go. Oh, go! Go, go away! You'll get your money! <laughs> Marcel. I don't need it.
now it told me such terrible things about you. Such terrible things. Tell me they were not true. Please. I promise you. What's going on out there? Give me that key to room 27. Ah. So you are still alive, then? No thanks to you. Some of the shots you heard were mine. Really? Were they me or them? Come. We will go to your room. Protective custody. Désolé, ma petite. Je ne voulais pas te faire peur. Oh, je n'ai peur rien de... depuis cette nuit. Oui, je sais. Vraiment, je suis désolé. <coughs> Now, I tell you what, hein? We are going to have a little quiet evening together. And we speak English, just as you used to do with your dear maman. Oh, I'm sorry to be so... so silly. But your step sounded... sounded so like those others. I know, I know. A nightmare. I tell you what, I get you a little something. No, 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 no. I'm all right now. I insist. Uncle Henri. I know why you came tonight. You brought the presents for the concert, as you always do. Correct. Absolutely. We will carry on just as you used to do with your dear maman. Every month, You will give a concert for your blind friends. And you will continue to give them presents. The tradition must be maintained. All right. And I will make the labels, just as I always do. Now, we start with the tobacco. The uh, tobacco. Tobacco is for uh, who? That was always a secret, Maman and I. I know. But if we are to continue, then it must now be our secret. All right. The tobacco is for Madame Hébert. Does Madame Hébert smoke a pipe? <laughs> of course not. It is for her husband. Oh, alors, c'est pour Monsieur Hébert. Hein? Now, the, the big box of coffee creams. This one. Yes, this is for Madame. Oh, I love coffee creams. Let's open it and test. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. C'est défendu. All right. C'est pour Madame Simon. Madame Simon. Merci. Ah. Bath salts. She's upstairs. Yes. Henri Thibault is with her. Thanks. Don't make any more telephone calls, Stephen. There are no calls I wish to make, monsieur. Who is it? It's me, Marcel. 
nice, huh? Oh, McGill, how nice. Come in. You've met my uncle, Henri Thibault? Yes. How are you? I am surprised, Mr. McGill. Uh, I did not know you were calling Mademoiselle Robard by her first name. Well, I move very fast, Uncle Henry. You gotta watch me. Would you like a drink? Please, yes. Permette. I hope you two will be nice to each other. I am always prepared to behave in a civilized manner. Thank you. Have you finished wrapping these gifts for the concert? Carrying on the old tradition, as you might say. I've told McGill about the concert and about the presents. And dear Maman, and you. Well, they wrap very nicely. Yes, they feel good. Do you really know what's in every one of these? <laughs> of course I do. Presents are important to people, Monsieur McGill. <laughs> Everyone appreciates the present because it says, Somewhere, another human being is thinking of him. Yeah, it's very nice, Uncle Henry. Merci. Listen, I'd like to talk to you alone for a second. If Uncle Henry wouldn't mind. No, no, of course not. So, thank you. Uh, don't run off, Uncle Henry. We have to have a long talk. things with Uncle Henry. What things? Please. This is still my house. And you're still learning about people, remember? Oh, I wish I could see. Perhaps then I'd understand more. Trust me. Je regrette, Monsieur l'Inspecteur, mais il est parti. Monsieur, on n'a plus ici. Attendez-moi là-bas. Idiot. You want a little discussion? Well, let's call it a medium-sized discussion, I think. Along what lines? Well, to begin with, if we opened each one of these little packages... But to what purpose? Well, instead of talcum powder or bath salts, what kind of drug do you think we'd find in there? Cocaine? Heroin? It's an interesting fantasy. That's not so fantastic, Uncle Henry. No lady killed for some jewels that don't exist, and a policeman from the narcotic squad hanging around, and a concert once each month where little gifts are distributed to innocent blind people. Enough of fantasy, McGill. I'm quite sure we can settle this in a civilized way. I hope so. A man with your record shouldn't be too upset. What do you say? Uh, $10,000? I wouldn't even uncover the drugs. <laughs> Much less the old lady. What about her? Murder comes pretty high nowadays. And we both know she wasn't killed for the jewels, don't we? Killing her was a blessing to the world, especially to Marcel. I think you'd have a pretty rough time convincing her of that. A blind spot. So the old girl masterminded a dope ring. Why should I deny it? Organized with the capital from the sale of the original jewels, the tiara in 1956, right? You know, McGill, you're really very good. Yeah, I'm pretty good. So, you pass the stuff on to her, and she distributed it. All over France. A very big deal, I assure you. Yeah. And unfortunately for her, she didn't let you in on the distribution. Big money. And you didn't know which of the guests got the little package. But you know now, don't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I, I know now. <laughs> Marcel, of course, is completely innocent. Uh, she used to type the labels, as she was instructed by her mother, uh, in Braille, of course. So while the old lady was in the way, I could not know for whom they were intended. So now you control the whole enterprise. One advances in the world. So, shall we say uh, $10,000? You agree? Wait a minute, Uncle Henry. 
You didn't kill the old lady. Because your embassy alibi checked out. So who'd you have kill her? Same people you arranged to take pot shots at me? Does it really matter? Let us say I have a new business associate. Uh, someone with an interesting connection. Who would that be? Too much knowledge is a dangerous thing. I'm sure we can settle this over a little drink. So you do not agree? Get your stuff. Oh. So you wish to go to the police? That's right. As you wish. No fuss, Uncle Henry. Marcel's in the next room. Monsieur McGill, you do believe that I care for Marcel, don't you? Yeah. Strangely enough, I do. Upstairs. Did he say anything? No, just that he didn't kill the old lady. So he says. Marcel, it'll be all right. Just go back to your room. She's hysterical. <laughs> what she says is nonsense. <laughs> She's just a blind girl. Just a blind girl. She's more than just a blind girl, Monsieur l'Inspecteur. Is upstairs. I know. I know. How is she? In her mother's room, alone in the darkness. I tried to help her. Thanks, Stefan. Stefan has prepared a shake for you. Thank you, ma'am. Why do that? I can't see the sun. You can feel it. I don't trust my feelings anymore. Mama was right. I belong here. You don't belong here in the dark. Maman was killed by Henri and Pana. Yeah, that's over. It's past. The concert is now, this afternoon. Concert. My innocent concert. Where once a month I gave poor dear old Monsieur Brun a present of bath salts. Only he wasn't blind. And the bath salts were drugs. Even the concert betrayed me. No, it didn't. And all your friends will be there. And they haven't betrayed you. It won't go on. Yes, it will. Those concerts will go on. Birth and death and love. It'll all go on, whether you sit here or not. 
It's too black out there for me. Just look for what light there is. You're no safer here. You never have been. And you never will be. Help me. I can't. It's something you have to do for yourself. It's your life. And you can waste it if you want to. Or end it. Or live it just like anyone else. It's too dark in here for you, my son. You I'm really glad you came. You came to say goodbye. Yeah. Do you have to go? Mm -hmm. Do you come to Paris occasionally? Every once in a while. Come and see me, Miguel. I will grow up. You're growing up every minute. Tell me what you see. You. I see you, Marcel. Yes, but will anybody else see me like that? Yes, I promise you. Goodbye, Miguel. Mm -hmm. 